Castology. Welcome to Castology, the podcast where we have to record this podcast very, very fast because no, Liz we don't. is cranky. <laughs> uh, look, yes, yes, I'm fucking cranky, but it's just because I looked at the clock and I was like, okay, guys, let's wrap it up. Like, this has been going on for a really long time. And uh, when you're a woman, that don't. makes you a bitch. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I will own that. <laughs> uh, I'm one of your hosts, Nick Bleeker. Across from me is Zane C. Weber. And Liz Bitch Best. And, uh, ooh, that's bang, bang, bang. I'm kind of into that's it. Actually it's not, that's actually definitely Liz Best Bitch, right? Liz Best oh, Bitch. Yes. That's a winner. Yeah. Um, but we're here to talk about some podcasts. How. That's Absolutely. How, yeah, it's our jobs. God darn exciting. Um, so we're going to start with some recommendations, and I wish to start with Liz. I thought you were going to start with Got yourself. Him. Okay. So um, you know how I like uh, narrative fiction? <laughs> I'm aware of this. Here we go. So here's some more. (laughs) I got some more for you. Um, So this is a little podcast called The Bystanders, which is a very da-da-da pantomime-ish style um, podcast where it's it's just camp as fuck, really. (laughs) One rainy night... Bunny Bell Pasht, who's the bad the bad girl played by Kristen Chenoweth, um, is stabbed to death in the courtyard of her apartment while all of her neighbours watch on and do nothing. Or did they? Bump, bump, bump. <laughs> I'm in. I yeah. Like yeah, I'm already yeah. in. Yeah. yeah, so it's basically, it's got um, people like Kristen Chenoweth, uh, Jane Lynch as the narrator, Oscar Nunez um, as a character called Phil Absconder, <laughs> who's um, <laughs> on the run. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's it's one of those ones that I just thought was silly, charming, dumb fun. Um, co-written, produced, and directed by Jacqueline Hales and Ash Lenzion. Um, also got quite cute little cover art of like just like noirish eyes looking through. Uh, uh, what do you just just blinds? blinds. I was going to yeah. say no vertical blinds, the horizontal blinds. <laughs> I don't know. You know blinds, the blinds from film noir, film Those noir are blinds. blinds. Yes, vertical blinds, Venetian ver- blinds. Yeah, okay. I don't <laughs> blinds. They're blinds. <laughs> now that word has lost all meaning in my mouth. So yes. One quick question. Yes. Because. She's in so much. Yes. And it's 50-50 whether she's good or not in a lot of things. Kristen Chenoweth, yes or no? Yes. Okay, good. Will because, this make me hate her because I don't like her? Uh, well, I think... She dies. Yeah. like. Well, she's dead. What? No, in the show. She dies in the show. Oh, she's Bunny Bell Pash. She gets stabbed to death. Oh, then I'm in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because she's such a mega bitch... And and then she dies and everyone's like, well, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Maybe we all oh. did it. Maybe none of us did it. I don't know. Um, How many episodes is it? I think it's about 10 okay. or maybe six. Anyway, it's a limited series. Yeah. Um, no. One and done. That's it. Camp. And I loved it. One and done as in there's not as going no, to be any more. I don't believe okay. there'll be oh, another cool. series. Cool. It's, a, it's a limited mini series of camp, almost pantomime fun. Fair enough. And murder. <laughs> Murder. Sounds a little bit like. Um, uh, what's that Disney Plus show that's on at the Kind moment? of only murders in the building E. That's the one? Yeah, kind of. That's kinda. the vibe I'm getting. Yep. Cool. Um, I'm going to go next. Wow. All right. Um, Best for last. This like was a recommendation from Zane. It's true. It was. Me. It was on my list, and I went. You can, have, you can it. have it. Oh, that's generous. It's really, really thoughtful. This is what we call pod sharing. By all means, have a look through the rest of my list because I've got lists up until the end of next year. So I please. did see did that. Did you end up Sweet putting Jesus. that one that I sent you on your list? Because you not, should. Not yet because I haven't listened to it just yeah, yet. Yeah, I started I listening to it and I was like, I reckon this is a new yeah, podcast. It's on my list of things to listen to, but I'm putting. We'll on be list. cryptic and not tell you what it is yeah. yet, audience. Um, anyway, my recommendation this week is Hong Kong Silenced, which is. A very limited series. There's only four episodes from the uh, Daily Telegraph, I'm pretty sure it is. Mm -hmm. Uh, Or the Telegraph, as they like to call themselves. Um, This literally is a show just about the current state of Hong Kong and China's reign, I guess. I don't know if you'd call it like a reign. I don't know what you would say. Uh, China's... Control? Influence. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and and honestly, this is... This was very current when it was released, and yes. the situation is constantly changing. Yes. There's good groundwork. It is, and I, and I and that's where I think this is a really good entry experience into what's happening in Hong Kong. I was pretty aware of it, and to be fair, this doesn't offer much new to me because I'm pretty well versed in it in the sense that I'd followed the news quite closely even up until what was happening early in, uh, sorry, mid-2021. Um, but this is a fascinating, fascinating, fascinating show about brainwashing and about independence away from this sort of, I guess, almost 
omnipresent power yeah. um, that has so much influence over this particular culture that just wants to have its own freedom. It's not particularly happy making. It is incredibly Look, it angry making. it sound like it's a romp. <laughs> yeah, it is not a romp. <laughs> it's not pantomiming. Whereas the bystanders <laughs> is a romp. <laughs> so maybe it's good to balance one out with the yeah, other. Yeah, <laughs> this is the thing and this is what I like about this podcast. Whenever someone brings something that makes you want to cry, someone else will hopefully bring something that makes you not want to kill yourself. Yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. It's, it's that's extreme, what we do. But, yeah. um, but I found this, I, this is one of those things that I really wish and I feel like it may continue. I'm not 100% sure. It seems like it's on a break or it's finished for good. Um, if things escalate or things do change significantly, Please I really hope it. that this yeah. continues to produce episodes because it is a very good show in terms of how it's structured and its stories, how it's protected its identities of its interviewees and the experiences they've all had as well. So it's really good. called Hong Kong I Silenced. am actually interested. Bang. Because we're very close to Hong Kong and Australia. That's and terrifying. And we look, don't hear much about it. And we've also pissed off China and France I and mean, everyone. Everyone. Wow. Uh, the ScoMo's not great. Everyone but the UK and the US, and even they think we're idiots. Mm. Oh my God, this is so fun. The world's going to My end. podcast <laughs> recommendation <laughs> is not an angry making one. Oh, yay. Um, it's not Zane Dry. Oh, yeah. It is following my new theme of Nerdy Nerds. 2002. Great. I wish. 2022. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was like, uh, can we? Because then I would only be in first year uni. That would be real Them's nice. the days. Yeah. Uh, it's called uh, Everything Everywhere Daily. That is a thing that exists. Everything <laughs> is everywhere Perfect. daily and a basically, lot. Basically, it is a daily podcast that takes an interesting topic and gives you the, a little background of history, how it comes about, interesting facts about it. Um, it is really is hosted by by one man, Gary Arndt, um, researched and produced, very impeccably produced, very interesting. Um, I highly recommend, um, I, it's Christmas has well and truly passed now, but the episode on St. Nicholas um, was a great episode. I enjoy things about Christmas. So. <laughs> I also enjoyed uh, the episode Planet Nine, which is not a, necessarily about Pluto. It's about the search for Pluto because it was theorised for so long before they found anything. Huh. Um, hmm. yeah, and then they went, you know what that thing we found? Nah, no more. <laughs> nah. Well, they just found so Pluto many can, others and they were like, Pluto well, we can can't fuck have 16 now. planets. I mean, Bye, that would Pluto. Be cool. We looked for you for so long, but then... You don't matter. Wait, they lost Pluto? Well, they d- they it's declassified a, it. It's as a dwarf a, planet now. Oh, okay, okay. So, right. They're like, you're not, a, you're not a big boy anymore. You're just oh, a, Pluto. Yeah, it's <laughs> very sucks. sad. But yeah, so also like through the Cola Wars, so Pepsi and Coke, that whole feud. Oh, I'm interested in that one. Episodes are less than 15 minutes. <gasps> I'm really interested 10. in that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's nerdy. It's very approachable, uh, bite-sized, fun Interesting podcast. I like nerdy, approachable, bite-sized fun. Yeah, good. I want that for my next boyfriend. <laughs> so if you are nerdy, <laughs> approachable, and bite-sized. bite-sized and fun, <laughs> please, please write in. <laughs> Unreal. Cool. All right. Um, so let's go to our recommendations from last fortnight. And I would like to start with Liz. So last week I recommended the family podcast Unspookable, which is a family-friendly look at histories and mysteries behind different scary stories, myths, and urban legends. What did we think? This one is, before I knew um, anything about this podcast except when you had said, I listened to it and I was like, is a little bit over the top for me. But I remember that it was for kids. Yeah. Mm. And I remembered what I liked when I was a kid, like that unsolved mysteries and whatever. Yes. And I think this is it it harks back to that in a great way in that it doesn't it doesn't buy into the myths that it is talking about. Uh and yeah, this is really approachable. I it's a little for lack of a better word, wet for Zane. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I would. Shall we say twee? (laughs) It was a little, yeah, it's not dry enough for me to kind of be comfortable listening to it. But if you were Baby Zane. Baby Zane would binge this. Yeah, like Baby Liz would have just been like, this and my book of phenomena, I'm in. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. This is a a great, and their, not only their artwork, but their episode artwork is French Kiss Beautiful. Mm. Um, Every... French Kiss, not Chef's Kiss, like a full-on tongue in the mouth, French French Kiss kiss Beautiful. beautiful. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Honestly, it it is, it's like an... Children's Zane. (laughs) 
the hell's inappropriate. That? I mean, I'm not kissing the children. I'm kissing the artist who I assume isn't a child. Uh, it is, yeah. So it's just an inky representation of of the thing with the watercolor. It's yeah, it's great. Yeah. Um, the whole production is very, very polished. Mm. Yeah, great podcast. This um podcast fucking rules, and I think it's the the thing that for me that's that's quite not not striking, but really stands out is that they do bring the kids on to contextualize. I love that was my respond. favorite bit about it, like yeah. hearing like it's not just dictating to kids what they should know, but it's talking to the kids and figuring out what they do know. Yeah, and I think that was where I was like, yeah, and I kind of vibe with that a little bit because I feel like I'm kind of like a kid in class as well, right? Like you're just putting your hand up and you're just sitting there, and like for me, I'm pretty stupid. So this sort of stuff is really interesting in the sense that, like, it talks Don't about... Don't be mean to yourself. No, was... I'm allowed to say you're stupid, but you're not allowed to. It's part of the gag, you know? <laughs> um, but for me, it's, it's, it is quite delightful in its presentation. And I think it's... Again, I think I did have the same thing as you saying where it was like oh this is a lot and i was like oh it's for fucking kids yeah this, it's just this is it's literally a realization of oh this isn't for me yeah, yeah. this is good but it's not for put me. yourself yeah. in yeah. eight uh, what is it recommended for ages eight plus so eight plus nick hey oh, i fit there honestly, <laughs> honestly i think there are times and moods where this would be great to listen to Five, like i even thought about because my nephew's just turned five and i reckon when he's a bit older i would sit there and listen yeah. to this with him oh look i no doubt i would probably do the same to be completely honest like if i had children friends that were of that age but also friends, i think it's a, it's a great way to approach the idea of like monsters in the closet and ghosts and yeah i think so mystifies like yeah. they were even talking about that freaky momo thing that went around the internet mm. that looked fucking scary and was terrifying a lot of children and kind of talking about how it starts as just like an internet prank really takes the fright out of it yeah, yeah. and again like that w- when there is that context of the, the kids talking about what they think it is or them understanding it I that's really where liked, you kind of I listened to Aliens 1 and yeah. what, what the, the kids were saying is like oh I think that aliens exist but only as like single celled organisms that we could call aliens but not like in the big big eyed aliens that they show on TV and it's like for an 8 year old that's, that's a lot that's, that's, that's <laughs> That is yeah. a lot. Just, you're thinking too deeply. <laughs> even I couldn't. I wouldn't deep. even know what a single cell anything was at that age. Yeah, I really struggle just as a single cell organism myself. So. <laughs> uh, cool. Yeah. No. I look Nick, honestly. Only I'm allowed to call you a single cell <laughs> organism. <laughs> Self love, us hate. Yeah. Okay. Fine. I understand. I understand. Uh, Zane. Uh, I wait. What am I talking about? What? I just blanked. What's mm. happening? Who am I? <laughs> You're Zane. I know Dino. I know Dino. Yes, we're recapping. I know Dino <laughs> is a paleontology podcast, and I realized at the end of last episode that I didn't. I mentioned this just by two Dino uh, obsessed people. Uh, they're they're a married couple, Garrett and Sabrina. Oh, that's cute. Um, that is cute. And uh, they got married, and then they started this whole project. They realize um, how much they love dinosaurs. I think they probably realised that before they got married. Um, But, yes, still very cute. Uh, Yeah, it's talking about paleontology news and interviews with paleontologists and discussions about what's going on in the world, world of dinosaurs. And I discovered, listening to this, a whole bunch of fun new names for dinosaurs. Uh, Because, you know, list a name of of a dinosaur, you'll, you'll know five. But there are so many more fun ones. I want to know more fun names of dinosaurs, so you'll have to point me in the direction of those episodes. <laughs> well, just just just, just go through look it. at the titles. <laughs> so my notes for this say I know so many nerds that I went to school with who would be so <laughs> hype about this podcast. I said this is a great early teen dino nerd cast. Yeah. And look, with me, I do love a good dinosaur story, but I did find myself drifting in and out because sometimes it's just too, I want the cool shit about dinos. Mm. I want to know. I want to know. I don't necessarily want to know about the bone structure of the Actually, skull. I do because my mum <laughs> just bought my nephew. I was talking a lot about my nephew. Hi, Mason. Um, he's not listening. I swear too much. Um, my mum just bought my nephew these match-up memory cards, but instead of it being two pictures you have to match, you have to match the dinosaur with their bones. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Cool. 
Yeah, how cool is yeah. that? Anyway, so it's got me thinking a lot about dinosaurs this week, so it was very appropriate <laughs> that I listened to this show. I think this is great for anyone who is interested about dinosaurs, interested about bones, interested about paleontology, interested about nerd stuff. Like, it was it was good. I occasionally found myself drifting out, but, you know, there's only so much dino bones one can take before you – no, that sounds mm. bad. <laughs> Too much – yeah, but, yeah, it's good. Thing, I it's, it's a very specific nerd podcast. Yeah, so but, yeah. like, I yeah. can picture – and, and remember the people that I went to school with who would have been all over this and been trading cards based on it. Like, I was one. I yeah. was one of them. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Like, yeah. yeah, look, I, I mean, I'm the same, really. I was hoping that they talk about, like, dinosaurs fighting heaps and stuff like that. Like, I wanted, like, fucking dinosaur fights and shit. And I know that's my expectations being way too high, but... How would you... How How do we know? How? I don't no, know, no, no. Talk I about mean, them fighting all the time. Yeah, what do you expect that to... Like, narrating an imaginary fight? Yeah, like you know, fucking talk me through it. You know, the wrestling of, ring, the history of you know T Rex breaking the neck of a brontosaurus or something like that. You know, uh, like oh, you were looking t- at like predator prey kind <laughs> right. of discussions rather uh, than you, yeah, sure that, but uh, yeah, how T Rex could never actually fight a Stegosaurus because they were from two vastly different times. Yeah, T Rex is actually closer in age to us than to a Stegosaurus. Yeah, well, Nerd look, stuff. <laughs> <laughs> look when you said because when you like when the Stegosaurus couldn't afford a T Rex, and I was like because one's really tall and. He can't bend down that far. <laughs> some people get paleontology and some people don't, Liz. And I think we are on opposite sides of that coin. 100%. Look, I get it. I just find it funnier when you don't. Yeah. And I think for me, this is – look, this is a great show. I love that um, uh, Garrett and Sabrina both have a passion for it and I do have – I'm an, I'm enamored by it. I really am. I love it. Yeah, I love when you can hear the passion come through yep, yep. from these types of podcasts. Yeah, I just want to. And also the name. I know Dino. Yeah, I know Dino. I'm it sorry because I looked at it and I was like, oh, cool. And then when they said hi and welcome to I know Dino, and I'm like, oh, it rhymes. I didn't. I was like, I know Dino because that's what it looked like written <laughs> yeah, down. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know Dino too. <laughs> He's um, a cool dude. But yeah, this, yeah. This is not my thing. My first thing I thought was like, oh, this is yeah, Zane. This, this would be great for Zane. I should recommend it. But this it isn't to him. even Zane Dry. Like, it's not Zane Dry. Yeah. It, it's it's a that's what I mean. It is a kind of it skews a little younger. Yeah. Um, but it also like doesn't I talk said, down. Yeah. Good early teen Dino nerdcast. Yeah. Also, props to, props to them for having released three hundred and sixty seven episodes. Jesus. That is us. A, Monumental effort, yeah. seriously. Yeah. Um, so props to I know Dino. Also, they have a great website, so go onto oh, their website. They? Oh, okay, um, they, lots of Dino facts. Lots they of Dino facts, of dino but they also fighting? have the, what I, my favorite thing on their website is actually a quiz about the Bone Wars. Now, Bone Wars. What the hell is Bone Wars? So basically, when paleontology was becoming a big thing, there were two paleontologists who kind of came up as friends, and then they formed a feud. And so when they had like different, I want camps, a podcast about what that. What the fuck is this? I'm almost certain I've recommended episodes about a podcast about that previously. Bone but, yeah. wars. But basically two paleontologists who would like explode the other one's camp and so specimens were lost and would steal things and how they would like put them together incorrectly and they would sass at each other. I just imagine them like a little muttley stealing like a little bone and, like, <laughs> <laughs> and then running away. <laughs> Bone Wars sounds sick. It, it, it's very, it's very interesting. <laughs> I will now try and find Wars? a Bone Wars podcast. I love for you. Yeah. Just like what? what? <laughs> Excuse me. Um, cool, unreal. Uh, so I'm going to, to my recommendation, which is AfterShock, an iHeart Radio uh, podcast um, that talks about. Uh, well, actually, sorry. The cast and audio design for this is huge. So basically the purpose of the show is it's a massive massive earthquake that destroys the west coast of the US and causes an island to appear in the middle of the sea and it's about the journey to this island. The cast is Sarah Wayne Callies, David Harbour, Jeffrey Dean Morgan and Tati Gabrielle. What did you think? You you described this as sometimes too much and it was too much for me. It, the sound design was overbearing. Um, mm. I would have liked more script if that if that's possible. Like, yeah. um, and again, you, you mentioned with the dialogue, everything that you said, I kind of agree with. Um, that being said, that's like saying something's too good. Like, it's it's just the these particular design elements didn't click with me. Mm. Um, but 
And also the story I didn't really like, but it's still a good podcast if you're interested in it, if, it, if you listen to it and it, and it gets you. Um, but yeah, the sound design was a little too... It was a little too movie, I mm. think, for me, with a lot of unnecessary atmospheric sounds, like thing people putting things on desks and... and yeah, like yeah. it's is ripped from a TV show or anything. Yeah, like yeah. you'll... Yeah, and in some podcasts, specifically, I'm going to recommend... I'm going to hark back to my favourite, which is Carrier. Specifically, like, you're meant to be hearing every single thing that the character is hearing. In this, you, you are a third person... Mm. And you're hearing just things, and I think that that muddied the water a little bit. Yeah, but it's not a bad podcast. It's just yeah, uh, listening to this, I think there are other similar podcasts that I would listen to, and I don't think action lends itself well to podcasts. Not particularly, no, unless it's orchestrated properly, because it's yeah. ag- again, action is like it's visual. better seen. <laughs> yeah, like it's better seen than it is yeah. heard. If not physical, it's it's visual. Yeah. yeah. No, nah, fuck it. Explode things in my ears. <laughs> <laughs> No, I um I'm into this. Um I have been kind of looking out for something that I thought had um like that kind of when I'm driving in my car at night as yeah. I am sometimes want to do, I want fucking car floor rumbling sound and that's what this gave me. I'm into like if you want to fucking make me feel like I'm in an earthquake on the highway, that's totally safe and fine. <laughs> um there were a couple of times when I had swapped to headphones and I heard something and I literally turned around mm. to be like, who's that? Oh, that's in the podcast. Yeah. Oh, that wasn't necessary, but very realistic, unnecessary. <laughs> um, yeah, like I I would like to hear, I'm sorry, I would no, like, like to hear is, yeah. more action actiony podcasts. I really I like this isn't my favorite podcast, yeah. but I like fucking bring it on. Like explode shit. I love it. Yeah, like I I don't mean to sound like I'm the final say. No, no, anything, no, but, you're not. Yeah. And I sometimes like disagreeing with you just so that there's an extra <laughs> point of view on the podcast. Um but yeah, I just said uh looking forward to finishing this one. Quite enjoyed a lot of the performances. Every now and then the sound mixing is a little off. Um I think where some of the sounds are overwhelming the voices. Mm. And that's kind of what I was, what I thought. Like, yeah. because in a movie, that's okay because you can see the body language. In a and, movie, yeah. I watch it with subtitles on because I do miss a lot of <laughs> yeah. things. Yeah, and same. also, I chew very loudly. <laughs> Honestly, yes. Yeah, if it's a chip movie, the subtitles are on instantly. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, and that's kind of what I kept. Yeah. Like, I expect a podcast to be a different medium to just the sound of a movie. Yeah. And this one was just a little too close to that for my comfort. Yeah. yeah. I think sometimes I really gel with the ones that are a visual medium because it seems to me like it allows me to imagine in my head mm. what it looks like with the aid of a of an oral medium. It's like I'm reading a book and able to yeah. imagine that mm. part of it whilst someone is sending me sensory clues. Yeah. like. I don't know what it is, but I'm, I I I thought it was good. I think we need to stop saying iHeartRadio on this podcast, though. Like every time we yeah. recommend a pod, like do you notice that many of the other podcasts that we have recommended, we haven't said the name of the network fifty million times. <laughs> yeah, I know. While we recommend it, so maybe we'll cool it on saying the name of the network. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. Name the name, and unless it's a fun network, just beep it because it's funny. Yeah, but like sensory like beep that's not funny. canon. Like. <laughs> That's not kind of, I've never heard of it before. <laughs> I know. Well, they're an up and comer with, you know, only over 100 podcasts. Oh, that's that's true. And you can also submit some of those podcasts to that's not canon.com <laughs> forward slash castology. Maybe or, not those. Or we could definitely say Fable and Folly more because they do mm, some good work. True that. Well. Yes. Yeah, we can say, like, I want to I want to look at some of more the more um, indie podcasts. Yeah. Like, they're not indie if they're in a network, but there are independent networks. Like, not bankrolled by big radio that's, is what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, 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 I, would, yeah. I would say anything that isn't financed ahead of time yeah. is independent is, yeah. is, is indie is is yeah um, well we've faced a lot of criticism or, or like uh, maybe it's just me but um when i've been in different podcast chat rooms with people saying oh only you know indie podcasts can't get a look in and i was like hi i'm an independent podcast they're like you're on a network i'm like no but i'm on an independent network like, we're, a, we're on a, we're a collective we're a collective like i was just like i don't get like I, I, Wait, what's the difference? i'm still poor so <laughs> we share uh, resources oh yeah. okay basically a network will ta- take your property and market it for you and you're just the talent right so and that that's the sort of uh appropriation of ip and what have you with with that's not canon 
you own your IP 100%. You also own um, everything else that goes with it. We're just here to support the creation of it. Yeah, it's like a – and we've got like collected – not that this – I meant for this to turn into an ad, but it's like a a collection of resources that can help us do our own marketing in more effective ways and big discussions and – Free hosting and and access to ads and uh, marketing tools and that sort of thing. Right. Sorry, I didn't mean to turn into an ad, but (laughs) – but that, that, that is the difference said, between a collective and a you network. You should record yeah. an ad and put it in our <laughs> podcast. I have an ad, but I sound so wanky in I'll it. I'll say it for you. What does yeah. it sound like? Can you show me afterwards? Sure. Do we? Was I here for that? Um, I don't think I've even oh. heard it. No, it, it, it went on the the temporary COVID podcast that we had. It went on the end of that because it was like all the different That's Not Canon podcasts contributing to one, yeah, one cool. feed and that sort of thing. Yeah. All right. You have to show me afterwards. Anyway, if you want to submit some podcasts or some independent networks or podcasts. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. If, you, if you're an independent yeah. network or a smaller network and you want to submit some stuff, submit a few. Submit a few. Yeah, like, for sure. Submit a few yeah. from mm. your network. We mm. might even do like a network themed episode if yeah, you oh, that's produce fun. really good stuff. Yeah. So you can do that via that's not canon.com forward slash castology. There's a form there that Zane will do everything for and Zane will tell us. <laughs> To do some I things. will listen. You'll, and then yes. I will say whether or not either of you should listen or whether I'll steal it for myself. Yeah. and yeah, Sounds about right. <laughs> hey, I've been given some great recommendations so far, Zane. So uh, thank you very much. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> um, you can also get us on all the social media. Just uh, search for Castology and uh, we should respond. Hopefully we haven't been posting because it's hard to do that and I'm super lazy. But we're not going to talk about that right now. Anyway. You brought it up, man. Yeah, that's very <laughs> true. I've been one of your hosts, Nick Bleeker. Across from me has been... The nerdy Zane C. Weber. And... Elizabeth Best Bitch. Oh, Best Bitch. Keep listening to podcast, people. Hi, I'm Abby and this is Alan. Hello. We're from the Lunatics Radio Hour podcast where we explore the history of horror and modern horror storytelling. We do deep dives into legends like ghost trains or the Headless Horseman or Wendigos. Available wherever you listen to podcasts. Including cell phones and computers. 